Hi everybody. So I'm doing a redo of this video um, that I just did because I recorded it sideways. So hopefully this one comes out better than the first one. I also had a lot of um, energy leaks and was fidgety. So I'm going to do a redo. So today's video is about uh, my experience being drugged and date rape misconceptions and love abuse bonds. Um, it's a pretty vulnerable reveal, uh, this video. And, and I think it's vulnerable not because of the shame piece in it, um, because that's been healed, but just sharing with people and, and other people's reactions around it. So it's pretty vulnerable, but it's a very important part of my, my healing. So, um, I hope I'm recording the right way. So if anybody's watching and I'm sideways, please message me and tell me if I'm sideways. Um, so where do I begin? So I had met, um, a guy named Tom a few years ago and I met him through another friend. We were traveling from Colorado, um, to Florida and on the way we stopped off at, um, my travel companion's best friend's house. And when we got there, it was so gorgeous. It's like the most beautiful lake house in the middle of nowhere in the woods. And I mean, I just fell in love with the place and wanted to be there. And then when I met Tom, I, I instantly clicked and was like, okay, I really like this guy. I want to start something with him. And I thought he felt the same way. Like we, I thought there was a connection. So I hung out there, um, you know, there were some people there, another couple, and just hang out there and recouped from the long 21 hour drive we had just done. And I was pretty tired. I got in the hot tub that evening and had no idea, I had no idea what happened. All I know is I woke up the next morning and in, in Tom's bed, had no idea what happened. And you know, I didn't ask questions. I. I didn't ask and mostly because there was a shame around it like I should have known what happened you know there was a lot of shoulds so at that time so I didn't ask and it happened again the next night and the next night and it went on for a few nights like that where I would just get in the hot tub and have one sip of a drink and wouldn't remember anything and just wake up in Tom's bed the next day Finally, the last night that I was there, and oh, by the way, all the while, we're talking and hanging out, and I thought there was a connection, right? So it wouldn't make sense that he would be drugging me. So the last night that I was there, we were playing pool upstairs, and the friend that I was traveling with said he saw me, he didn't tell me, he told his girlfriend, that he saw me stumbling around and, and just acting like I was confused. And he suspected that I was being drugged. Okay. Um, again, nobody said anything and I didn't bring it up. It was like so much stuff was being unspoken. So I left to go home and we carried on um, what I felt like was the start of a relationship. I mean, we were talking every day and texting and um, I definitely felt there was a disconnect, but that was pretty usual for me. I wasn't able to connect um, to men on that level. Um, oh, cool, I see Tina's on. Tina, let me know if my video is sideways. I'm really worried about that now. <laughs> so anyway, so that all happened and I decided, you know, I wanted to go back and see him. I was really into him and so I went back and it's interesting. I stayed with a friend right before, on my way to go back and she just had a bad feeling about it and I ignored her and I ignored my intuition. And so I went and when I got there, he was having this big Memorial Day party and there was a lot of people there I didn't know. I knew one person who was another woman and I got there and I remember just everybody was hanging out and um, you know, it felt like we were having a good time and I... I thought we were having a good time and there was 
if I can count correctly, I think there was about seven, seven to 10 men there. And I don't remember what happened. I woke up the next day and I was in Tom's bed again, no surprise. And I just happened to like, I felt kind of headachey. I looked in the mirror and there was blood all over my face. I had, um, I feel like it was like a, a mark or like a cut on my nose, um, I had a black eye. And I went downstairs and started asking like everybody like what happened? And granted that felt really humiliating to me. I mean, there was a lot of shame with that. And so I went and asked everybody and nobody could tell me what happened. Like none of them, not a single one of them could tell me what happened. They just said they, they didn't know, they couldn't remember. Finally, Tom said that he thought maybe I slipped getting into the hot tub. So at that point, you know, one of my shoulds that I used to have was I should have gone to the cops, but there was too much shame in that, that I would let, let I would let that happen to me or um, I couldn't remember what happened. That was a big thing of why I didn't want to ask what happened. Um, and then there was the, the resistance of subconsciously, I just don't think I wanted to know. I just wanted to not know that this was happening. So I couldn't go home. I was, you know, out in the middle of the woods. I was all banged up. And then I started having IBS symptoms. So I felt really sick and didn't want to go home. But every night for the next probably seven nights, the same thing would happen. Um, I wasn't feeling good. I would get something to drink and bam, I wouldn't remember what happened. So I finally, when I felt good enough to leave, um, I went home and immediately as I started driving home, I was having intense vaginal pain. It would hurt so bad. It was excruciating. And that went on for years, years, I think probably about four years. And I was so ready to get um, a pelvic floor physical therapist to help release the, the tension in there. Um, finally, my best friend, who's a shamanic practitioner, Alethea Adams Torres, she did a soul retrieval and that dealt with a lot of forgiveness in the situation. And it also took the pain away. And ever since then, I have not had the same vaginal pain. The other physical thing that happened on the way home was my jaw. I feel like my jaw was somehow dislocated during that process. It hurt so bad. It still goes out every once in a while. So there were physical symptoms there. The body knows um, what happens. The, the body will remember, even if we can't remember because of being drugged or being too young to remember or literally just disassociating, the body knows. And then the subconscious, you know, when a traumatic event happens, even if we're not conscious, it goes back to the subconscious brain. And so I started having a lot of destructive behaviors. Like I started drinking a glass of wine every night, which isn't a big deal, except for when you think about why it's happening. Cause I couldn't be with myself. I started dating, um, a lot of men and they were all men that ended up I kind of want to say using, I don't want to victimize myself, but it was, it, it felt like they were using me. Um, I think I had four semi relationships that year and they all ended with a lot of heartache. So, you know, I didn't come to terms with the fact of what really happened. There was always room in my heart to say, oh, that didn't happen until 2015 he tom the guy that was drugging me he actually got caught by his drug dealer roofing the drug dealer and his girlfriend and they went to the cops and the cops were going to come do whatever they were going to do and tom ended up tying a boat battery to his body and jumping in the lake and so he died and it wasn't until then when I realized, okay, that was happening. Like I got out of denial um, when that happened. So at this part of my healing journey, you know, I, I can't go back and ask him questions about what happened, but through breath work, 
which has been the number one, I would say the number one healer and on the sexual healing journey has been breath work. And it's not the kind of breath work you do in yoga class. This is integral breath therapy. And so it's, it's tons of different modalities mixed into this breath work. And in the breath work, I've been able to see glimpses of what's happened. I've been able to feel it, you know, because what you can't feel, you can't heal. So the breathing has really brought up a lot of the memories to the surface. Um, I do know that from um, the friend that took me to Tom, his um, old girlfriend did tell me some of the things that um, Tom did to women. And I wished I had known sooner. I don't know if I would have been able to receive it, but um, I did find out the things he did. And I think that that's helped too with the denial. Because, you know, we don't want to believe that something like that's happening to us. So, you know, the reason for this, this video is really to let people know that, you know, date rape's not just something that happens um, or getting drugged isn't just something that happens at a bar by people you don't know. It can really happen to people you know that are so-called friends. And I think that's important, especially to let our daughters know. Um, you know, a lot of our daughters are now like approaching teen years. And my biggest misconception was that's just something that happened at bars. If you get something like that happens to a friend, then shame on me. That's my fault. And so I've talked to many, many women who will take the self blame and say, this happened because I was, I was drinking it, you know, I had it coming or, um, I knew better and it's not our fault at all. You know, a lot of us are just trusting that people we're hanging out with aren't going to hurt them. Why would I let something like that go on for probably a total of 14 times um, with this one particular person? Um, that is a destructive behavior based on past sexual trauma, which we won't get into the, this video. And also because there was a love abuse bond, just naturally I really wanted to believe he was an awesome guy. I really had like completely unrealistic fantasies of um, being in a relationship with him. And I was really just looking for security. I had just gotten out of another relationship. Anyways, I digress. The, the point is, is this love abuse bond that can form between an abuser and the person being abused um, showed up for me like I was always associating like we, like Tom and I, or we did this, or we did that. So there was a strong like we. So I was putting myself in with him. And then also um, just making up stories and defending him really to the very end. And I will be completely honest, when I was still working on my, um, well, I still am working on the sexual healing journey, but the first nine months of breath work, I still didn't want to let go of that bond I had with him. It was really bizarre. And I didn't, I still, even though I knew he did these things to me, there was something there where I was still making excuses. And it, it took a lot of work to break that. And so if you find yourself having these types of situations happen, and you're defending and saying, well, um, you know, they did this to me because, or just making up stories like, he's not really doing that. I must be, you know, I would be like, oh, I'm just in the hot tub and I would get too relaxed and I must have just fallen asleep and he must have just carried me to bed. No, he was drugging me and taking me to bed. And so I'm hoping that this video can do a few things. One, just kind of knock out those misconceptions and know that if anything like this has happened to you, you're not alone. Um, and to say that, you know, you can heal from this. I now have a beautiful relationship and can have authentic intimacy now where I'm not in fear and I am fully trusting. And yes, it takes a lot of work. And 
if you feel like you've been drugged and you just kind of blow it off and say, oh, I don't remember what happened and I'm, I'm, I'm strong woman, I'm okay, your body still remembers and your subconscious knows. And I'm telling you, if that has happened to you, you could have a much richer, fuller um, life, intimate life, if you can work on it. And so if you have any questions, definitely just message me on Facebook or you can go to my website, intimacyafterrate.com. I will talk in future videos about other sexual trauma that I've had that I believe led led me to the place where I was able to um, be in whatever state had me be there for 14 days total but not today because this has been enough vulnerability for for one day so definitely reach out if this has helped you and Thank you for watching.